Good evening, gamers. Welcome back. I am the AMDM Lee. Well, this is my cup of coffee. And let's face it, you're watching a commercial. So here's what I wanted to do. The whole reason this commercial is here. So I wanted to point out these items right here on the side. Now, the first item on there is our Monday night Q&A. Every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m.-ish, you know, gamer time, uh... I go live on TikTok and here on Twitch to, well, talk about D&D. I answer questions. We have our homebrew mechanic build a device. We challenge him each week. Either homebrews a class or race or feat or spell. And all of that homebrew is inspired by you guys. But we talk for a few hours in, on all kinds of things. Then on Tuesday night, we have our Order of the... No, sorry, that's not Tuesday nights. Tuesday nights are the Black Door. The Black Door is a group of assassins set in the Weird West. They have the City of Sunlot, which they were originally in. It's a coastal town, which their Thieves Guild and the Assassins Guild have been mysteriously overrun. So they've left town, and now they're on the open road. They've stopped a bank robbery. Now they're hunting down some lost people. They're helping a caravan along the way. There's all kinds of adventure. On Wednesday nights, we jump over. We here on, on this channel start hosting the Chaotic Rollers, which is an amazing group of RPers where we sit down and I actually get to play. That's the amazing part of it. <laughs> it's, of course, I'm there. It's, you know, it's not the problem. I am Brat, God of War. Or I could be Davish Ran, Gunsinger Extraordinaire. But we get to have a lot of fun with that one. Thursday nights? Well, Thursday nights I take the night off. I relax. Copy, watch a movie or two. You know, typical things. But I believe we host Hilarious Game Master. If not, we will. soon. If he, if he does it on Thursdays, we host him. Then on Friday night, Friday nights are our biggest nights on here. That is when we do the Order of the Scale game. Now, the Order of the Scale is a group of, uh, is a group of military soldiers and misfits that have been sent from all over Sakaris to this particular order. The order is the right hand of the Sultan. There's been turmoil. There's been betrayal. There's been love, laughter, and death. There's a lot of things going on in there. And that campaign is not only run here on Twitch on the Fridays, but it is also RP'd all through the week on our discord server it is a living campaign world that is being built there would you like to be a part of that it's a lot of fun and i have two other dms on there angel with a sin and adorante who rp at two different times a week on once on sundays i believe on thursday nights where they rp for the channel and send them on missions as well so there's a lot of chance for growth on that the last thing I want to talk about real quick, after that all RP, that's all the RP, that's all the, that's all the stuff we do on there. No, it's not. There's a lot. And all of that is helped from you guys and these links right here. Let's see, this one goes this way. Yeah. So right here, these links right here help us out to provide all of this to, for you. It helps with our Patreon. It helps with our giveaways. On our Discord channel, we give a set of dice away each week. Plus, I have the BBEG. That's right, the BBEG, the Big Box Extreme Giveaway, which we keep adding to. And it's just getting bigger. And it does this because of the support from you guys. You can help us out with Patreon. Go on there. We have four levels. We have a $3 level, which is just basically you going, hey, I like your stuff. Here's a couple of bucks. But that gives you access to our council room, to our parliament, 
but you get to vote on things that happen within the server things that we do in the future you have a say in it also gives you access to that homebrew stuff that we build on monday night give you access one week earlier than anyone else then there's the ten dollar level which is a little more of saying hey yeah thanks a lot we do appreciate this we have a lot of fun here and hey can i put a character in and i take an npc that you have made be they a shopkeeper a, a council member a wizard in a tower it doesn't matter you create this character you give me all of their information and i put them in one of my streamed games it's as easy as that then we have the twenty dollar level that level there is the approved player level see that thursday night that i'm off well that's saved for the approved player games those games may or may not be streamed depending on what the players themselves choose. We run a, a guaranteed game the last Thursday of the month for them. The more players I get, the more of those Thursdays that will be filled up with approved players. Would you like to be an approved player? Do you want me to run a game for you? Go to our Patreon, sign up. And I will make sure you play in a game that I run. Last thing on here. You see that down there on the bottom underneath the, the Patreon thing? It's a Zazzle. But I'm going to get to that later. But that's a spot where you can come and support the AMDM. And get yourself some cool gear. That's all I've got for now. Till next time. Go forth and roll some dice. Remember me talking about cool gear just a couple of moments ago? Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the Black Door, where on screen we annoy the DM, off screen, <laughs> off screen we talk about spicy ramen. <laughs> <laughs> And annoy the DM. And annoy the DM. That's right. So, does I, uh, everyone remember where we last left off? There was a lot of. I believe it was to the point right before I killed everyone for <laughs> deciding <laughs> to turn away from the. We started right, and due to my character's bad listen saves, he is now starting to a cult about mechanical birds and doors. All right. <laughs> so they had they were you know were first sent to deliver a letter, which may or may not been have have been delivered. You have no clue. Um. By doing that, you also subverted an entire game worth of game night that I had planned and decided to go back into town for a couple of days. 
uh, went and contacted the individual that gave you the job and found out some more information that you probably wish you'd had sooner. Uh, then in the process of waiting around, these mysterious doors that were the color of sky blue started appearing and disappearing all over town. And y'all realized the flight of the artificer, which sounds like it should be a poem, uh, <laughs> or ballad. The, uh, you realize that they were swarming, going around a centralized point, which going to investigate that a large red door showed up. Which y'all, by the time y'all got there, a crowd had already joined up, had been pushed back from by the town guards, and then started being investigated by the local uh, wizards. You proceeded to send the mechanical birds over to try to open it up with the mysterious keys. <laughs> After a couple of rolls, good in some places, bad in the others, um... A riot started that threatens to consume the whole city. <laughs> we do what we can. And now, <laughs> the, the riot is spread out blocks. So that is where we stand. <clears throat> Or fly or hide or <laughs> there is a full blown riot going on around you. What are y'all what are y'all doing? I believe me and Shay are still on top of the building. <laughs> yep. Yep. Tariq is currently standing in the crowd as everyone's trying to is rushing past him. And last I know that was Artie was flying around the top. Artie's flying around the top and Tariq is trying to find where Arch uh, Archimedes is to ask him about do birds have a special thing with doors or what? So what are for, very, oh, go ahead. for a very special decision, <clears throat> one of you, please give me or tell me high or low. Hi. I was gonna say hi. Oh dear God. <clears throat> Bad decision it is. <laughs> all decisions, all decisions are good decisions on someone's idea. Oh God, no. Uh, yeah, he is circling like 200 feet up, similar to a buzzard, <clears throat> and then as he sees the crowd breaking away, are there still guards near the door? There still, there are, uh, well, the, there are a couple of guards there, uh, the guards are actually more paying attention more to the chaos around them trying to get people to back away from the wizards at least uh and the wizards themselves seem to be more preoccupied with the loud raging crowd of people than with the door itself um, i'm gonna fly about a <clears throat> hundred feet over the door and i am going to take out a White glove, put it on. Take out a I'm already brush. Decision. Taking out a a brush for painting. I'm going to dip it into a pot of white paint, and I'm going to snap my finger with the gloved hand. A mage hand is going to grab the brush and float down, and I am going to use prestidigitation with the brush to 
paint the word privy on the door. <laughs> I told you this po this was possible the last time we played. <laughs> That's right. We did have that discussion after the game last time. Give me your performance roll. Okay. Uh, RG skills. Oh, that's... It's at that angle, that's... you know, you're flying up above it and you're trying to write something on something that's... Do you want that at regular or disadvantage because of the let's, distance and height? You know what? Let's give it a disadvantage since you brought it up. <laughs> How? Mm. How? Okay. That is a 17. Okay. So, uh... The crowd's like, another bird! <laughs> oh, no, they can't... They He's 100 feet up. Uh, oh. They see a brush come down and paint the word privy and then float back up. <laughs> if they're paying attention. Well, the wizards aren't. Neither are the guards. And neither is the crowd. It's amazing. <laughs> With those rolls, you could have flown down and done it. I said it was a dumb idea. I didn't say it was an absolute stupid idea. <laughs> but yes, uh, no one seems to notice. Uh, Y'all notice that the words privy is now written on the door. In a familiar hand. <laughs> it chuckles. And then I'm going to recollect my brush and I'm going to fly over to the uh, rooftop that my friends are at. <laughs> well, that's one way to do it, Archie. I don't truly understand what I was thinking at the time, but... Uh, oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think this is going to be a a story to remember. <laughs> oh, and that, I, I think we uh, we reached that before you decided to paint the word on the door. <sighs> Me and Shay were already talking about starting a riot, being the first time we had started a riot. I mean, I'm pretty sure this news is going to travel pretty quickly. I'm pretty sure that our possible employers already know about this. Oh, I'm sure they do. <laughs> we already knew they had us under watch. I mean, technically, the doors aren't ours. They aren't. And this was all... This initially was to uh, see if we could find anything out when we couldn't. Yes. Fun is fun. Now, if we end up finding out that uh, people are after us because of di of this, we in a way uh, we we know our way out of town. Well then, and I hope that we get to stay here. But uh, if this presses the wrong buttons, so, we know how to get out. So Sparky. You're in the middle of this crowd that has gone ape shit around you. What exactly are you doing? Trying to get myself back to our, our place of living because I have no clue where anyone is. I figured if we need to meet up, we'll probably meet up there. Okay. And also, our, our computer, sure? we didn't just press all the wrong buttons. We press the wrong buttons to send the nuclear to start the nuclear launch. Maybe, maybe not. This could actually be beneficial for them. We don't know. Mm -hmm. It de it depends which strings they were pulling on at the time. <clears throat> the pockets of paradise. Pickpockets Paradise, uh, this could also run in if they got any politicians, they can uh, run up 
on how this could have been changed in their favor in one way or another. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they have plenty of ways to roll this. But chaos also makes for a dry spell after. And great cover during. Great cover and one hell of a uh, flood of possibility. It's the dry season after that is usually the problem. All right, so what are y'all's plans? Those are that are on the building. Oh, probably should wait until the uh, crowd dies down a bit and then head home or back to the room. That's probably for the best. Agreed. Unless you, unless you two are up for sprinting across uh, All right. rooftops. The crowd is there. Are they've now moved into pockets after uh, about an hour they're now in like they're no longer like everyone it's now groups of mobs here and there across the city and you can see smoke and fires lighting up the skyline as it starts to get darker um taking having taken a while to get through this um Sparky, as you've made your way back mm -hmm. uh, to the inn, you, as you open the door to the inn, the owner there st starts to actually come around the corner and just takes a huge-ass swing at you. <laughs> now i got to find... Uh, All right. Yeah, uh, Sparky, that was, uh, he swings with a seven to hit you. That just bounces off my armor. This, what it is, is this, um, chair had come through. It just, just cracks on you. And then he looks at you and goes, oh, Sorry about that, sir. Ah, uh, quick, quick. Inside, inside. And he kind of ushers you in and closes the door again. Sorry. Thought you were one of those, uh, uh looters. No, no. I don't loot. I don't even know how to play it, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, well, if you want something to drink, you can go have it. Um, bar's open right now. And he's kind of looking out the window. Uh, the rest of you, it started to, it's, it's starting to get into evening now. Yeah, well, we're, I would say heading back. If the crowd's dispersing a bit. Yeah. Um, y'all <clears throat> give me stealth rolls as y'all make y'all's way back. Okay. One sec. Sparky, they're going to get back to the end about a half an hour after you do. Well, I'm sitting here talking to the barkeep. I'm going to ask, tell, ask him, so what do you know about bird and doors? Huh? That's how the whole riot started. The giant door in the center of town and mechanical birds. Okay. Are you all right? Did you get hit on the way here, son? <laughs> <laughs> I might have got hit, but it's just how things are. Birds ah. and doors, man. Birds and the doors. All right. Um... um... 
23 on my stealth. 28 on mine. All right, and then that's more than enough. We're doing doing a party check. Y'all are, uh, as y'all make y'all's way back, you do see and hear, uh, you know, angry mobs going through. But once you hear them and see them, you're, you're able to set yourself off to the sides and hide a little bit out of their, uh, view. But you do eventually make it back to the uh, to the inn. See, you can ask them. That's like because of birds and doors, man. He's gonna grab a drink, sit on the table, and that was fun. You, you. You try to go shopping. <clears throat> Still don't know what the door is all about. Not a damn clue. Oh, Mr. Yeah, I don't think we'll know. Not anytime soon, at least. Mr. Archimedes, sir, is there something special about birds that like yours or something like that, man? I mean, not normally. I've seen plenty of birds try to dart through windows that are closed. I've seen a couple land on uh, door handles and try to... Uh, open it up so they have a new place to roost. But, um, nah. Nothing, nothing more, dif er, nothing really different than them in trees or burrows. So, because the door is made of wood, they can use the tree. You have seen the uh, the sins before, yeah? I've had one sit on you before. I don't know why, but I'm thinking about witches and wood, right? You say witches, and now I'm thinking about sandwiches because I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. It's not long before uh, <clears throat> Lugwidge, and uh, Lugdom, sorry, Lugwidge, where did Lugwidge come Lugdom's no longer looking actively out the window. Uh, he hears overhears y'all talking about food, and he goes back and makes y'all a small little dinner. Don't worry, man. We uh, we look after the front door for you. Uh, I appreciate that. I mean, pulls out a pulls out his gun and just point just sits back pointing it at the door. Uh, y'all have a have a meal. Uh, is there anything else y'all are planning to do this day? I think, I think it's basically going to be possibly having a watch set just for the fact that. There's probably still a riot running through the night. So nothing's getting made. Both of the remaining sins are going to um, keep watch throughout the night. And whoever wants to join them.
Well, who's Starkey's gonna ask Archimedes a few more things about birds because he's really interested in them now. Ah, uh, yes, the danger hippie is interested in birds. <laughs> So he speaks to the biggest one he knows. Yep. So who's taking first watch? I will. I'll take second. I have faith in my birds. So first watch, give me a perception roll. With advantage, because birds... Twenty six. Twenty six. So yep. As the uh, as the night progresses, there is a point where you hear somebody. Uh, it sounds like somebody running. And on the outside, and they start banging on the door trying to open it up. I'll look out the window and see who it is. Uh, see if I recognize someone. If it's it's it doesn't look like um, anybody you know. And once they see you, you kind of look out, they kind of glance over and see you, they take off running again. Okay. And then after a few minutes, you see some, a uh, couple of city guards pass by. And nothing else happens on your watch. All right. I will wake up Shay for her watch and let her know what happened. Yep. Chris is still trying. All right, Shay. Um, give me a perception roll. Dirty 20. All right. So, during your watch, you do hear what sounds like marching. Very much a very much a rhythmic sound uh, progressing down the street. As you kind of glance out, you see that the town guards are actively moving in large uh, groups throughout the streets. If they have positioned this many guards on this street, um, by morning, most things should be back in back to normal. But that is the only thing you notice on your shift. Next. So who are you waking up? Are you going to wake up Sparky or are you going to wake up Artie? Um... Well, we're doing, what, four-hour shifts? Three-hour shifts? I don't know. Nice. Three hours makes it so that everybody gets sleep <clears throat> and that uh, one person gets a undisturbed sleep and 
covers the ten wow. hours. Sir, but I only need the four hours. So, um, yeah, mm. I will go get Sparky. You're up. I, I know I'm awake. You just woke me up. <laughs> See the door? You're watching it. Okay. Do I do anything if it opens or just. Oh. If it's someone that's supposed to be here, let them in. If it's somebody that's not supposed to be here, wake us up. Okay, this will work. This can work. What if it's a bird, though? Birds have things with doors. If one of ours, let them in, and if it's not, wake us up. <laughs> okay. Alright, give me a perception roll. The birds will give you advantage with the help action. Is this a y'all are doing four hour shifts? Right. So this would be Okay. I just wanted to make sure nineteen. Nineteen. How long the shift was. Mm-hmm. Fair. So At the as your shift goes along, quiet. You hear uh again you hear guards moving through the streets, but have seen no one else. Near the end of your shift, right as the sun is starting to lighten up the room. You turn from the front door and turn around, and there is one of those sky blue doors in the middle of the, the inn. What's odd is it's got something written on it. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to read what's written. The 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 letters written on it are Y V I R P. Even I'm going to walk over and nudge uh, Archimedes and be like uh, Archimedes man uh, Archimedes. Yeah. What what you want? What's I was, supposed to, I was supposed to watch the front door, but there's an, another door, and I'm confused. Look where he's pointing. And Do stop on the red door with you. That happened, yes, but uh, it's here now. Is the door still there? Yep. Still not getting up, pulls the white glove on. Has a magic or a mage hand pop. <clears throat> Wipes the sleep out of his eyes with one hand and makes the mage hand go to the door, see if it can open. It does not open. <clears throat> actually get up. You knew uh, Raz Diadas so that uh, if anything bad happened, we all ready? And <clears throat> he's pulling on his armor and 
loosely tying it as he's walking over. <clears throat> and he's going to inspect it to see if there's a keyhole. There is not a keyhole. There is a, unlike the other doors, there were just the slabs there. This one does have a handle to it. Mr. Shea, Master Kimja, and Archimedes says, wake up. We have something important to add. Better not be about a bird. It's something about a door. I would like to inspect the door. It, <laughs> give me an inspection roll. Or investigation roll. <laughs> You're doing this, Archimedes' face is like two inches from the door, just kind of staring hard at the doorknob. Uh, that would be a 22 investigation. All right. It's a, it appears to be a wooden door slab. No visible hinges, <clears throat> no visual, visible door frame. A handle uh, on one uh, side. And some letters written on it. Shay's going to go over and knock on the door. Go over and you knock on the door. How are you knocking? That's like three quick taps. Tap, tap, tap. Yep. Wait, why does it say pretty backwards? Nothing happens when you tap on the door. On the door, by the way. I, I think okay. this is much more tied to that red door than uh, originally thought. And I now, knew I had. I knew the doors had something to do with the door. Well, he's going to pinch the bridge of his beak as he takes in a deep breath. I think this may be an invitation. <clears throat> and with that, he tightens the armor on. Who's ready to uh, accept this invitation? Because this door doesn't seem to be going away. He pulls on the shield and starts tightening it. You'd be rude not to, man. Pulls out the bow. Ready when you are. <clears throat> Goes ahead and draws my uh, short swords. One deep breath, everyone. Take one Whatever deep breath. Whatever we face, and... we face it together. You know it, brother. And with that, he slams the shield down on the uh, doorknob to see if he can make it turn. Oh, it's not a doorknob; it's a handle. door handle. Yeah, <clears throat> it's not one that you, it's not uh, one that turns. It's one of those just, just a grip. Lever. I, yeah, Act. it's not a lever. It's it's just a piece of brass. Think of it like you'd see on a cupboard or something. Okay, and it's very it's very. Very cast iron plain. Not decorative or anything else. Very utilitarian only. In that case, he's going to stick his fingers in that are on the hand that is not shielded up. And he's going to pull. All right. I need... Uh, one thing you notice. It's... It's warm. It's not... Uh, like hot, but it is warm. And the next thing you notice is uh give me a strength check. I'll I'll be damned. That was not a bad roll. That's still just an eighteen now. Not budging. 
I'll grab and pull with them. One, one sec. I'm gonna try the other thing. I push. <laughs> and the door does not open. <laughs> try and okay. slide it. Now we do this together. No, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. <laughs> try and slide it. Try to slide the door. Slides into a pocket dimension. I mean, there's no frame. Where, yeah. where that's a really good idea, and I wish I'd thought of it, but no, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> we work, we work together. Oh, oh. and the one, uh, and the two, and the three, and the nothing happens. Wait, what about a tree? Well, why don't you let the uh, strong one try? Let it, let it go. <clears throat> get, get stupid yet clever, and go to the other side of the door and start pushing. Nothing happens while he's while he's trying to pull it. Not me. You definitely don't want me trying to pull it open. <laughs> I think, I think I am just barely stronger than you. I, I think it might in strength. All right, I'm. You definitely don't want me trying it. Does a twenty three do anything for strength? Not to this door, it doesn't. You think you're getting a good pull, but then you realize it's just your fingers getting stretched out of socket. There's no oh, give good. to this door whatsoever. Y'all have been working on this trying to get this open for a few minutes and as i said it was right there as the sun right as the sun before the sun had risen up you can see now that the sun is up just barely minutes after sunrise you hear and those of you that are touching the door feel knock knock Knock. Amazing. It echoes through the room. You also hear it echoing through the streets. Kind of look out the window. As you do. Are there more doors? <laughs> there are. Every door that had appeared yesterday is now there. Do they all have the same letters written on them? Yes, they do. Oh, good. This is this is going to be a literal shitstorm. Uh, was that literally knocking on the door and it knocking back? Is it three knocks? Three knocks. Not in response to mine. That's a delayed response. Takes time to travel between realms. <laughs> Oh. Shall we try to open it again? Or do we invite it in? I try pulling the handle again. Nothing happens. Maybe we do have to invite it in. Or do we need to go back to the main door? Gotta push ever so lightly on the front of the door and cast Thaumaturgy 
or press the digitation, whichever one allows me to do music. And it's just the rhythm of you keep on knocking, but you can't come in. <laughs> okay. And I'm going we'll to say of the Sakarian equivalent. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to back up and I'm going to wait. See if that comes back. If it does, it tells us something. All right. And it's. As you. Uh, give me a perception roll. Anybody who is actively Everybody? watching the door. Perception. Perception. A lot. What? 25. I got a 2. 24. 23. As the hour slowly ticks away, Um, well, almost exactly an hour, give or take. I mean, some things. There are three more knocks at the door. Knock, knock, knock. All right, someone, uh, Someone call Harlow real quick. Hi. Lugdom see comes downstairs to see, sees the door. And um you can tell he's hesitant to come down any farther. But sees y'all there actively messing with it. And eventually makes his way to the kitchen in a manner that would keep him as far away from the door as possible. <laughs> He's literally just hugging the wall with his back to the wall all the way back towards the kitchen door and sneaks into it as fast as he can. And after about, after uh, a few minutes in there, uh, comes opens it back up, sets a tray of biscuits and sausages on the counter, <laughs> on the bar. And goes, ah, oh, ah, <coughs> oh, right, yeah. And then makes his way he, as fast up the <laughs> steps as his body can take him. Many thanks. As soon as he disappears, it's time for something else stupid. All right. Come in. Come in. What are, gonna, what are you I'm doing? Turn. I say to the door, I say, come in. Oh, come in. I thought you said command. And I was like waiting for the rest <laughs> of the spell. I'm like, he's casting a spell. Does he have this spell? Does he have spells? <laughs> come in. He does. Um, no response. Open sesame. You're welcome to come in. No response. I grab a biscuit, sit in front of the door, looking at it. Knock again. About, an, the... about almost an hour after the last time that the door that the door knocked again three more knocks knock 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 maybe we need to go to the main door another thing you notice because y'all's perceptions are really fucking high um <laughs> no it's not it looks like the letter <laughs> y i mean they were drawn just kind of painted on there easy but it seems to be more faded than the other letters on the 
Ador. My hand over the lettering, does it feel warmer there? No. But it still feels warm altogether. Well, not the, the door itself doesn't. The handle does. So, because I can try and I can do it quick and quiet, I can get close, find out, and come right back. We up for that? Or you, you do. Keep, you keep messing around here. I go check that out and I come right back. Can I have your pot of pants for a sec? He's gonna take out the small pan that has um, the three primary colors and black and white and just places it down and Thanks. then hands off the brush that he used the day before. Thank you. I'm going to paint the word enter on the door. Okay. I'm you, going, you should paint it backwards. I'm going to f fly at top speed to uh, about 100 feet up over the town as uh, to go check out where that red door was, see if it is still there, see if it is altered in any way. All right. Um, it does not take you long flying at top speed to uh to get to the to this door and the door looks the same with the exception of a handle on it that is of the same make and design of the handle on every blue door that you have passed on the way here is the Y on the door faded or it, smudged? It is slightly faded in comparison to the other letters. The Y, well, it's kind of like looking at a a shade of white. You know, you start with the pure white on one side, and then as it gets down to the other letters, they're got, they've gotten more yellow and faded and older mm -hmm. looking. So you're you're seeing that same gradient on the larger door. So as I'm writing the word enter and I'll do it both ways, forwards and backwards, is it coming up on the red door? No. Okay. Are there people around the red door? Yes. Uh there are the some of the same wizards you saw yesterday. Uh, definitely more guards. And now they're looking at you. You get just bits and pieces because of the distance. But you hear some of them talking about, you know, now it's got a word on it. Privy? Why is it saying it's a, is, it, is this thing a giant privy? You know, just, <laughs> you know, like a bunch of the what the fuck type of questions that, that you were hearing yesterday. <laughs> and then somebody saying, well, how, what does, what does this have to do with the, the mechanical birds and the keys? And they're just confusion. Do they notice Archie above the door? No, because they are hopeful because 100% on this door and the surrounding areas. There aren't a whole lot of flyers uh in in Red Sage. So people don't have a tendency to look up. Shh. 
Another hour goes by, and almost on the dot, three more knocks. Is it louder from the red door? Yes, it is definitely louder from the red door. Knowing this, I will wait one more hour, and I'm going to try and time it to cast Thaumaturgy on the door to make the sound louder. Give me, <laughs> give, you know what? Give me an initiative roll. Wow. Top. That is a dirty 20. So I think this is the best I've ever rolled in this game for initiative. Well, I rolled a one on it. So you have timed it perfectly. As right as this thing starts, the, it's knocking. Knock. You're able to do the thaumaturgy to increase the sound. <laughs> So these three knocks are now, I mean, they were loud to begin with. But now it's like police been beaten on the door loud. You know, it's, it's LAPD <laughs> open up <laughs> loud. Immediately after that, I am going to fly back to the others at, once again at top speed. <clears throat> And I'm going to, as I come in, would a knock louder on your end? Were they? No. Nope. I say this because the red door is still there. And I waited for the knocks to come through again. And I cast Thaumaturgy to make it boom louder. Did they run off again? No. They were very concerned, because it sounded like a, a much bigger hand beating much harder on the door. But uh, I didn't want to get too close. <clears throat> Did you hear the mages saying anything about the door or where it's from? They're still kind of fumbling about on it. They still wondering about the keys and the birds and yeah. why the word privy is written on it. <laughs> you know, there are things that they could have probably, you know, not wasted time on and gotten you some answers that <laughs> way. But, you know, <laughs> now there's a lot more to think about. Well, one other thing we can try to do is open it as the knocking is happening. Y'all do notice, as you're now getting closer to midday, the lettering, the Y is completely gone. As the day has progressed, the lettering has faded off the door. It's about halfway, or around noon, the lettering is about half gone so i'm thinking i gave us an accidental timer to figure this out oh the word seems to be fading away now doesn't it but it seems to be fading away from the last thing i did to the first Are the new letters also fading? No. Hmm. So your <clears throat> letters are fading, but mine are not. I think it might have to do with the fact that it was done on the big red door. I don't know how this is working in all honesty because 
We saw signs that a blue door is first, then a red door show up. We mess with the red door. Well, okay, I fuck with the red door. Then the blue doors show up the next morning. Altered in the same way, and now all, all of them have handles. It seems... Don't forget the writing backwards, man. You're not wrong, but it is also fading in the same way that it was on the door, on the big red one. I'm wondering um, if... I'm wondering if the only things that we can do to uh, affect this might be only at the red door. And the blue doors are... Either, either they are the warning, the time clock, or the entryway for whatever is on the other side. And I guess we've got to head out to that red door. I think you might be right, but I also think, how the hell are we going to get past all those guards and those mages mm. to fuck with the door more, to figure it out? Uh, in Kinjar, where's my saving throw? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to write on the door, thanks for breakfast, be back later. Okay. <laughs> and then I said, well, I'm not going to do anything from here. Let's go over to the red door and see what we can scoot into. Hopefully I it's failed. not a big up. You failed. Oh, dear. All right. So as y'all all head out the door, yep, going to the red door. Kinjar's not headed towards the the center of town. He doesn't seem to be in any Wait, guy any more rush than than y'all are, but he seems to be headed out of town. He can no longer resist the urge. He must Wait, big guy. go back. I don't remember. I don't think she knows about the curse, does she? No. The only Kinja. one here that does is Archie. Kinja. What you doing? We have to go back. We were going back to the to the red door. No, we have to go back. Like, like even... <laughs> even, uh... Or sets even eyes on... On Kinjar. He keeps walking. Back to the place where we something have... that's taken over the minds of everyone we probably know. We have to go back. We don't have What's enough. What's going on there? To ask a priest to help with this. Damn it. <clears throat> Uh, we are following him for a moment, and we are going to brainstorm, because uh, we don't have the money to get a good spell out of a priest, but we probably going to need one. Oh? Why? So, the group that we used to work for gave us 
uh, some of our, uh, some very nice items that were questionable from where they came from. And we have to I'm go pretty, back. And I am pretty sure that he's set because they are sets, and yeah, they are. Pretty sure his set was cursed to make him want the full set, no matter what. And they had the only information of where to get the rest of his set. They have it all. Well, they said they have it all. But we have to go back. So the people that are trying to kill you, that followed you to another city to kill you are the ones he wants to go back to see. We survived last time. It's all right. We ran as fast as we could out of that town. No, 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 no. We, 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 we did all right. We'll be fine. But we have to go back. I look over to the other two. This is... If I am 100% right, which I could be uh, any percent wrong, that is possible. Um, the item is cursed, and he needs to uh, he needs to have that curse removed so that he can try to fight this off again. But right now, that's going to be about the only motivation he got. Well, I suppose been... we need to find a priest and quick, because he's not really overly cooperative at the moment. I'm, I'm glad you're noticing that. And uh, we can't leave him be, because he will just keep going until, and probably if somebody tried to stop him, it may get violent. I've seen curses happen before. I've seen a couple of people lift them before, but uh, the most common way that most people end up lifting curses is through death, and I don't want that to happen to my friend. No. So, we follow him. We figure this out. After we figure out how to help him, I didn't know he was suffering this bad. Oh, unless you know a priest here, or witch doctor, or whatever, that knows how to lift a curse, we need to move. Well, we can go back to the inn and get information to see if he knows of anyone that would be able to do it, but that's the only we option a, we have around here. We would have to do that pretty quick, because I'm pretty sure that he is going to march until he's tired, lay down, and then do it again tomorrow. Yeah. So, if you're going to see if, you know, if uh, our friend in the tavern know anybody, you do it now. I'm going to keep an eye on him. Okay, I'm going to fly back to the tavern and see if I can find somebody that would be able to lift the curse. After speaking with uh, um, Lugdom for a few minutes, there is uh, some temples fairly close by. Okay. Uh, I'm going to fly back to Archie and pass on the info that there are temples and we can try to hit up one of the temples and see if they'll do it with an IOU. Or offer services for theirs. Services is better. Oh, and an undue amount that always gets tricky later. Um. 
I'm gonna stick on him. I'm gonna send. Uh, I'm gonna send pride with you. Off okay. I go. All right. You've got a fairly good size uh, temple here now. As you as you enter this, and when I say temple, this thing is huge. Uh, that is because it's made up of. As you you get in, you notice it's actually made up of several smaller temples that are all kind of together. Uh, one dedicated to each of the the gods of the pantheon, with the largest one uh, being at the far end for Zerus and Xandis. I'm going to the largest temple. I'm looking for somebody. All right, you do know for for healing wise, uh, you would go to Zerus. There, the the quote, you know, that's the temple of life, the domain of life. Mm -hmm. uh, as you're going around, there are there are people going about. There seem to be a little more stance of. Uh, they're they almost agit. They almost seem agitated. They're very much. We've got to make. You know, it looks like it looks like an ER prepping for a flood of people type thing. You know, there's the the priests are running around assisting any shepherd that they can. Hey, get some more bandages over here. Let's get this over here. Get this ready. So there are plenty of people around. Walk up to somebody and say, hey, I have a friend that needs some help. Is anyone here good at curses? Uh, I, you, uh, some people just kind of glance at you and move on. But one individual does come up to you. It's a, uh, you're not sure if she is elf or half elf. She is probably right around that five foot mark. She is wearing the okay. um the vestiges of The vestiges of Mayala, which you know is of a uh, Mayala is a she. Um, what's your what's your race again? Just so I can make sure I'm oh. your elf. Okay, mm -hmm. you would you would recognize Mayala just generally. Uh, her she usually portrays herself as a plump matronly fairy. <laughs> So this young lady appears to be a, a shepherd of Mayala. So um, I I may be of assistance. What what can I do? I've got a friend who is he's got some sort of curse, and it's taken hold of him. He is literally marching to his death, and we can't get him to see reason and, you know, not march to his death. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yes, um, give me just a moment. Let me gather some uh, supplies real quick. Excellent, thank you. And she heads off, comes back literally within a couple of minutes. You see... As she, before she leaves, she, you see her talking to some old, older, uh, older human and elven, um, uh, you're guessing shepherds. Uh, give me an insight roll. 
All right, one sec. Sounds like one. Oh, that was a nat 20. All right, so as you're watching them, because this is the type of thing you do, you watch people. When you see her go up and she turns and, and points to you and continues talking, it doesn't so much seem like she's asking permission to leave as it does that she's telling them she's leaving. A nod. And then after uh, a few more moments, she comes back with a, with a small uh, satchel. Okay. Uh, take me to your friend. All right. I'm going to lead her towards where they were marching. Okay. It is slightly easier because you know what to look for. There's an owl about 50 feet in the air that is just circling over us. Yep. And kind of hard not to see me, so yeah. And almost eight foot tall freaking purple with a halberd. You can be pretty hard to see, or to be seen, uh, at least for six seconds. I can be hard to see when I need to. But yeah. So you you do make your way back and see them. So what what was happening while she was out out getting you a priest? A priest at this hour. Which, as the hours have progressed, every hour there's been a knocking at the door. That's a very efficient clock. Kinjar is just straight walking to the gate back toward the way we entered town. Pretty much the way that he knew the way back. Yep. <clears throat> and because he knows he's not going to get through and just keep getting information of we need to get back, he's actually, or Archie has been just kind of holding conversation with uh, Sparky. So, so you're yeah. sure that birds have nothing to do at all with war? I was the one that sent the birds with the keys to see if the, they could open the door. So it, all birds follow your command. Oh, you yeah, can believe what you think. Archie is the god. <laughs> you can believe what you want, but those trees specifically are were made by my hand and do my bidding until they uh, <clears throat> unfortunately pass. So you're the father of all birds. You're the all father of birds. He's going to look at the priestess and the one that's uh, marching without looking at anything or anyone. He's the cursed one. Okay, it's going to be just a minute before y'all get there. I'm giving them some time while you were waiting. Okay. See if there's anything but... else they... Anything else y'all are wanting to do or going to attempt to do. Basically, right now, it's keeping an eye on my friend so that he doesn't get out of the city before we... 
and he doesn't get into the line of fire for anything while we're on our way out. Okay. While holding conversation with our newest friend and <clears throat> trying to <laughs> so you dodge being called a god. So you uh So now y'all get there and you've pointed out to Myala or to the the shepherd of Myala. Uh which one it is and she's like, "Oh, um yes." Uh do you want to stop him so we can do this? Uh What's the curse? Do what? What? what, what I'm, I'm not stopping. I'm gonna wave Archie down. He's gonna turn back. You keep eyes on him. I'm gonna be right back. I take. I I run over. I don't fly over. Okay. I. I'm very, very thankful that you actually found somebody who has any way of dealing with curses. <clears throat> nice to meet you. I'm sorry it's under these circumstances. D My name is uh, Archimedes Rufflefeather the Third. It gives a full bow to her. My friend over there. Uh, I'm Shepherd Fina. Excellent to meet you. Um, my friend over there, the uh, the smaller of the two, he's got a couple of swords that he got from uh, from business, and it ended up being that some of these items were cursed. Some of us were luckier than others, from what I'm seeing. The curse on his blades finally got him. He wants to go back for the rest of the items that are linked to that. And it's not um it's not letting go. Hmm. Alright. He's being compelled to go find more of the pieces, and the only place he knows is as far as we know, uh controlled by a mind controlling beast. Oh. oh, goodness. Um, hello? What's it, what is his name again? His name is Kinja. Hello, Kinja. Can I have a word with you? Keeps walking. Kinja, man, that's rude. Do we need to keep him stationary? Do we need... Well... What would you... We need to get him to a point where I can... He needs to be stationary. <laughs> I think I might have... Just an idea. How long you need him to be stationary for? Um, couple of minutes. No, no more than fifteen. Depending on how okay. how serious the cast is. <clears throat> that's that's fair. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get him to stop just for a bit, so that uh, you can get that done. Okay, uh, all right, and she opens up her her satchet and starts going through stuff. She finds a like a you... barrel off to the side of the road next to one of the buildings and sets the satchel on that and starts going through things. Can you make sure that uh you have things worked out for how much this is gonna cost us, and then he bolts off and Heads back over to uh, Kinja. So, Kinja, I know we got a couple of things, and you want to go back. We can do that. 
But you know what will give you the strength to be able to uh, go for a lot longer? Let's make sure we have a good meal in our stomachs. How's that sound? Got to go back. Keeps walking. Kendra, the nice lady over here has information about your set. No, she doesn't have my set. I know where my There's set information. is. I know where my set is. Keeps walking. Yeah, Here, she, uh, as, as she's pulling things out, she pulls out this, uh, small bag and hands it to you, Shay. Mm -hmm. And goes, um, throw this in his face. <laughs> I'm gonna fly in front of him and throw it in his face. All right. So I'm gonna need you to make an attack roll. And considering you're throwing something, that mm -hmm. makes it a ranged weapon. So you will get to use your ranged. One one sec. So it'd just be a twenty, right? D twenty plus your yeah. dexterity and your proficiency bonus. Whatever your bonus is for your bow. A twenty-three. I I believe that hits you, doesn't? Does it not, Kinjar? Yes, yes, it does. All right, then I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Eighteen. Eighteen. You know, it might be a good time for a nap. Right, this looks like a good spot. <laughs> you kind of slow down and, um, man, I can't believe I'm this tired. And you are out. Is this a magical sleep? This is something you're not immune to. All right. It's not <laughs> chloroform, pretty much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's a, a strong uh, anesthetic we use sometimes. Uh, I, I hope it didn't use too much. So, um, and if he stays asleep a little while, it's okay. Yeah, uh, she picks up his arm and drops it. Yeah, he's going to be out for a little bit. Um, it's best to get him off the street here. Where would you like him? Um, anywhere just where we don't get run over by a passing wagon. So how about that alley that you were just uh, unpacking? Uh, that's, yeah. that, that's perfectly fine. Seems a bit shady. Okay. It's off the beaten path. It's just better to not, as she said, not get run over by uh, passengers, passers by. I swear if he picks up Kinjar and takes him over there, he's like, no, n not that kind of shady. As shady as in shade. Good to yeah. I... Although this is back alley surgery, so yeah. <laughs> it's not quite surgery. Uh, 
So yes, yeah, just sitting there, and she goes and you see these candles she has set out a little bit, and she just kind of points at the candles, and they all spark up and light. Uh, all of a sudden, the little incense burner that she had brought out starts billowing smoke. She takes some different uh, colored chalks and starts putting a you know circle around him with different little uh, the symbols and. You've seen arcane symbols dealing with straight ups with magics. You've seen uh, some other stuff. What makes these symbols unique is they all seem to be depictions of nature. Uh, and particularly depictions of spring. Where it looks Pernod, like they're, they're they're flowering plants, melting snow, but they're all very iconographic. Um, can I pop out my my manual and actually just try to copy what I see in front of me? Yes, give me an arcana roll. Go to skills. Go to skills. I'm going to, uh, real quick beforehand, pop a, a very small vial and sniff it and then put it back and cast um, Guidance on myself. Okay. For a flat 30. Okay. So... Here's one thing you notice as you're copying these things down. This is one of two things. One, this is some high-level shit that you have no fucking clue whatsoever as to what any of these have in relationship magically to anything else. Or it's complete gibberish. The very bottom of the page after I'm finished copying. Research question mark. This is, like I said, you, you either figure out this is something super high level or completely fucking made up. But as she does this, you see yep. the swords themselves start to glow like this dull ember light glowing up as this uh green very nature-like uh energy swirls around this the embering light looks almost like like dull flames where the green looks like plants and vines wrapping up around the weapons themselves fire burning part of it you know, burn a, a fire burns off this leaf. This other branch comes over, snuffs that flame. And as this battle between fire and nature commences on these blades. To a point where the blades the themselves freeze. are completely covered in this these etheric vines and, and branches and, and tree limbs and you see flower, just flowering things. As she's sitting there, just holding her hands out, she looks up real quickly, take the blades off quickly. I run and take the blades off. As you're doing so, you can start to see the flames starting to, to lick through parts of the vines burning or winning whatever starting to to change the tide of battle between these two forces 
as you get the as you're getting the blades off and you throw the first one to the side you can see she she just out of the corner you can see the energy that she was putting for that release and then just a a, a flash of flame burn instantly burn away any of the the green that was on it the blade looks fine again like it like it was before she's focusing more on the second blade as you're trying to get it off once it's completely removed from him the flames take over and it's just a normal sword or a a sword sitting there again <sighs> well that was something i haven't done in a while uh he should be fine now um we've broken the attunement um of course the items themselves uh definitely cursed and so very powerful curse on there indeed and i i'm not sure how long your friend lasted but wow uh if it was more than a day i'm impressed so the fact that it's been like three weeks yeah <laughs> since um, they were laid in his hands was about three weeks ago almost a full month impressive um he's well, he should be coming around. You, he, uh, Kinjar is starting to, to moan a little bit. It's probably still going to be a couple of minutes before he's conscious. Um, if he wields those blades again, he's going to get the rest of the set. There's Understood. no doubt about it that curse will take hold and be permanent. We thank you. Is there anything that we can do for you for doing this for us? Um, give me a perception roll. That's putting that skills. Uh, perception, that is a 22. A 22. You noticed for but a, and and it was very, let me see how imperceptible it was. Okay. <laughs> it was almost, you almost missed it. But she glances just that quickly over to the, to the door, to one of the doors that's down the, the street just a little bit. She goes, not at the moment, but maybe soon. Uh, I, I am best suited with prep and with creation. Personally. Is there anything I can help build or make for you? Uh, they can help the coming times a little bit easier. Not that I'm aware of currently. But we may call upon you. Um, Thank you for Archimedes, coming so quickly. Archimedes, correct? Archimedes, Kinjar, Shay. Spock guard, I believe. Spark Sparkguard. Yeah. Yes, uh if I do need something, I will definitely let you know. Uh but must get back to the temple. Uh we have preparations to make. Things are and she noticeably looks at the door. Things are unusual right now. Uh, you yes, we were trying to 
understand that when the crystal are cold. About this time, it's starting to get into the evening as the sun starts to get to set. <clears throat> the words on the nearest door, the word on the nearest door, it's practically gone. Every hour since I'm... sunrise, there's been a knock. The three knocks. Am I awake now? You are awake. I immediately look around, see my swords, and grab them and sheath them. Do not use those until we figure out how to clean them up. The curse that you've been fighting, it finally took hold. We don't want to lose you to a mind eater of any sort. Like you lost your last partner. Sorry. He is like Kadia. We don't talk about it. <laughs> um, Shay's just going to look at him and say, Next time it's permanent and we can't get you fixed. And I don't know who she was, but she knew my name. And she was the only one who could fix you. We will find things that we can set up for you. Those might be the strongest weapons you got, but they're not the only weapons we got. We can make this work. If you're willing. As you say this, the sun sets upon the horizon. There are three knocks. Knock, knock. knock. And the doors. <laughs> Open. Not one. All of the doors open. And that's where we're going to call it a night. Because <laughs> I have to get up and go to work. And I have to go back to work tomorrow. Uh... <laughs> so we'll see what happens next week on The Black Door. As our party members... Have to hunt down weapons and see what's behind door number one. And Two, three, four, five, and six. And 324, 473, <laughs> and then one big red door. So, thank you all for watching those viewers that we have uh come back and join us next week if you like the thing here you can check out the things down there we have our um patreon which allows to pay for for us to do things like this allows uh eventually will allow me to do this full time so i can just continue on with the game which would be so much fun we also have our zazzle shop there you can support us on that and get yourself a nice little uh, AMD T-shirt, some battle map bandanas. Uh, we got a new bandana in there for the Mimic Army, uh, which looks really cool. Which I will be ordering one for myself and hopefully have it soon. That will be my new bandana to wear on streams. Uh, but that is all I've got. Thank y'all for co thank y'all for playing. Uh, thank y'all for coming and watching. And until next time, go forth and roll some dice. Y'all have a good night. Bye, everybody. Night. Praise Bye. the Savior, Father. <laughs>